right, peace to the twelve. Y'all seen the uh, y'all seen the title? Yeah, animals actually know the Lord, man. And I think I titled it "Animals Know God," man. All right, yeah, animals actually know the Most High. I'm gonna get some scriptures on that. We're gonna prove it, you know. Which is, you know, I really did this lesson because it's crazy to me how a lot of our people, man, don't believe in the Most High and even damn beasts of the field, man. You know who people who 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 we are who we are uh more talented than obviously we know we we have way more intelligence, but even these damn animals they know about the Lord, man. Meanwhile, Jake's walking around not knowing what the hell's going on, man. But you know, anyway, let's get to it. We'll kick it off with Psalms one hundred four twenty one. All right, there are, there's 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 quite a few scriptures. I might have missed some. All right, but anyway, Psalms one hundred four twenty one, right? says the young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from god so young lions roar after their prey and they actually seek their meat from the most high man all right because who gave these who gave these beasts that chew on uh herbs all right who gave these deer antelope you know warthogs etc man you know of course you're not supposed to eat no damn warthog Another, you know, I've, I've covered that already, but um, that's supposed to eat pig, period. All right, so lions actually know about the most high, man. I'm gonna get another account on lions too to help prove that a little bit further. All right, so you see this lion looking up to the sky. All right, let's get Bell and a dragon. All right, you can read about this in the Apocrypha, which, yes, it is part of the Bible, man. All right, it was originally part of the Bible. Bell and dragon one in 30, right. Let's get it to it. So they came to the king and said, Deliver us, Daniel, or else we will destroy thee and thine house. Now when the king saw that they presented him sore, being constrained, he delivered Daniel unto them. All right, so Daniel's about to get delivered up. This is where you get the famous title of Daniel in the lion's den, which, by the way, that's how you know, <laughs> that's how you know the Apocrypha was originally part of the Bible because, you know, in your, in your standard King James Version, they don't even give you the account of Daniel in the lion's den. You know, they give you the furnace account. But this account's actually in the Apocrypha. But anyway, staying on topic, right? So, uh, he delivered Daniel onto them, who cast him into the lion's den, where he was six days. And in the den, there were seven lions, and they had given them every day two carcasses and two sheep. So on averages they fed they fed the lions two carcasses and two sheep. All right. Which then were not given to them to the intent they might devour Daniel. So this was their average diet every day, two sheep and two carcasses. But they restricted that and didn't feed them at all. Uh with the intent that they might devour Daniel. So they wanted these lions to eat Daniel. Alright. Now let's go to the next. Alright, so you know, and this is a very famous account. You brothers probably heard of this it happened a couple of years ago. But this this black woman, you know, so called black woman, she actually walked into a lion's den at the zoo, man, and they just looked at her like this, man. She never she never got attacked. Alright, right? We're gonna come back to that lion's den in a minute, but I'm gonna get another scripture, right? Second Ezra sixteen and six. May any man drive away an hungry lion in the wood? Yeah, that's right, man. Because can a, can a man drive away a hungry-ass lion in the woods, man? Hell no, nah, that's your ass, man. Or may anyone quench the fire and stubble when it has begun to burn? So it's asking the question, can any man drive away a hungry lion? All right, well, we're going to learn, you know, who can't? No, a man can't. That's right, a man can't. But you know who can? You how about Shimei was shy, the most high, man. All right, look at this lion. Lion hungry, man. Hungry lion. All right, look at his lips. Well, check this out. Bell and the Dragon, chapter 1, verse 40. All right, let's get it. Upon the seventh day, the king went to bewail Daniel. All right, so the king went to bewail Daniel. What's that mean? He was crying, expecting the worst, thinking Daniel dead, man. And when he came to the den, he looked in, and behold, Daniel was sitting. Then cried the king with a loud voice, saying, Great art, Lord God of Daniel, and there is none other beside thee. 
right? So Daniel was unharmed, man, with them them hungry lions, right? Verse 32. And he drew him out and cast those that were the cause of his destruction into the den, and they were devoured in a moment before his face. So the same people that cast Daniel into the lion's den, as soon as they went in there, man, they got ate on, man. They was on their ass, man. They ate them real quick, you know? <laughs> you know, they was looking like a snack. All right, so going back to this scripture, right? Uh, may any man drive away a hungry lion in the woods, man, in the wood. And the answer is no, but you know who can drive away a hungry lion? The Lord, man. And the, and the Lord basically, through the Spirit, made these lions not attack the man. All right. So I just wanted to get that account. All right. So, so but the other people they cast in there, they was on them like this. Like this picture right here, this lion was on them, man. No mercy. All right. <laughs> And I'm going to get you another scripture on beasts, man. Like I said, I think I missed some, man. I think I missed some. All right. Uh, Sirach 39 and 28. Let me get my phone see if I miss one. But Sirach 39 and 28, right? This is about spirits. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force. And appease the wrath of him that made them. So there are certain spirits that are created for vengeance. And in the time of destruction, they pour out their force. And they appease the wrath of him that made them. So they're like, you know, they do as they're commanded, right? We're going to find out what these spirits are, right? Verse 29, Sirach 39 and 29. Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. You know what else was created for vengeance? Watch this. Verse 30. The teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punching the wicked to destruction. So all of these are spirits, man. There are spirits behind these wild beasts, scorpions, and serpents, man. Meaning the Lord can send these things to, to, to get somebody out the way. I'm going to get you an account where the teeth of wild beasts do this, man. And, and insects and a snake, man. All right, let's get the accounts. Let's get the account of Elisha or Elisha, however you guys pronounce it. Elisha and the bears, right? Uh, 2 Kings 2 and 23. All right. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head. Go up, thou bald head. So these kids, man. These uh these kids were making fun of uh making fun of Elisha, man. We're gonna see what happens, man. And a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people don't bring up this thing. I bet you never heard this account in in your fellow church, man. Verse 24. 2 Kings 2 and 24. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them. So these two she bears came up out of the woods and killed forty two of these children, man. Like I said, and what he, and what else, man? And he turned and he looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. A lot of people get mad when certain brothers throw up curses on people, man. Hey, Elisha did that right there, man. And these bears came out and they killed them, man. Sounds like this, right? Uh, sounds like they appeased the wrath of him that made them, created for vengeance, man. The teeth of wild beasts. Right? These two she bears, man, they put in work. Alright. They 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 <laughs> they weren't playing, man. So it looked like it looked something like this. So that's the teeth of wild beasts, man. Now alright, now what else did it say? What else was a spirit? So the teeth of wild beasts and serpents, right? Well, let's get something on the serpents. Numbers twenty one and six. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Who did that? The Lord. He sent fiery serpents among the people. And they bit the people. And much people of Israel died. All right. So he sent fiery serpents to bite the people. And a lot of the Israelites died, man. 
Therefore, the people, verse 7, therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. All right. You see that? So some of, uh, this actually answers what I just brought out. See how the kids uh, got destroyed? Well, look at this. Why did they get destroyed? Because they had sinned against the, the for we have sinned against the Lord. Right. Hold on. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord. Who else they spoke against? And against thee. That's what they did to Elisha. They mocked him. All right. And as you can see, the bears came out just like the servants came out. So when people mock a man of the Lord, hey, the Lord catch up with him, man. That's why they're saying this right here. We have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he looketh upon it shall live. All right. So. I'll finish it out. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. All right. So. Yeah. You have people getting bit by serpents, man. This goes back to the scripture. The spirits created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts, serpents, man. All right, and that's the point. And you see, it says we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Let me get this too. Let's see if I can get this. Exodus seven and one. See, that's why they spoke against Moses, and the punishment was so severe. Exodus seven and one. And the Lord said unto Moses, See. I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. So the Lord said, I have made thee a God. Man, let me get another scripture on that. Let me get another scripture on that real quick. Let's get, 80, let's get Psalms 82 and 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. You know, the ancient Hebrew word for Israel, well, just the word Israel means prince of power. The ancient rule, uh, ancient word of Israel means Yashar Allah. All right. That's where these Muslims get the word Allah from. The word Allah just means God. All right. So prince of power means what? Prince of God. The word God means power understand that but there is one power um there is one power above all of course and that's the most high yahweh and his only begotten son yahweh shah man everything else is subject under him all right but moses was made a power it's like it says ye are gods the word god here when you look it up uh in the, in uh, the blue letter it means judge so he says really he's really saying i said ye are judges and all of you are children of the most high why because the judge has power Power to orchestra, or power, power to establish laws, man, and uh, enforce laws. So I just wanted to get that too. So when it says we have spoken against the Lord and against thee, hey man, hey you speak against the man of the Lord, man, hey you you could die, you could literally die, man. It's lucky. All right, moving on, man. Back to the topic at hand. So snakes can, <laughs> hey man, see this snake, teeth of wild beasts, serpents, man, punishing the wicked to destruction. Y'all seen that snake? This, this snake look like he playing. You know, I don't know what state this is. Look, look like a. It's like it looks like an eyelash viper, man. I look mad as hell, right? Exodus eight and one. All right, and the Lord spake unto Moses. All right, let's get. Okay, yeah, this is what we got. Salakia. All right, we got the teeth of wild beasts. We got scorpions and serpents, right? So let's touch on the insects, right? The scorpions. Let's touch on the insects. We're going to get the 10 plagues of Moses. We're not going to get all 10 of them, but we're going to get the ones that I wanted. Speaking of the beasts and the, and the insects, right? Let's get Exodus 8 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all the borders 
with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house, and into thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed, and into the house of thy servants, and upon the people, and upon thy people, and into thine ovens, and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee, and upon thy people, and upon all thy serpents. So the Lord played Egypt with frogs. Man, they was coming everywhere. It was all over there. I'm sure people started stepping on them. But guess what? When you step on a frog, guess what? Now it stinks, man. Smell like, smell like pure death out there, man. So one of the plays the Lord sent was frogs, man. All right. So he commanded those frogs, and they did what they were supposed to do, man. Once again, animals know the Lord, man. And animals do the work of the Lord. That's why I said their spirits created for vengeance. And animals were included in those spirits created for vengeance. You know, I always told my mother, man, my mother and my brother. Um, you know, I'm led to believe for those of you that watch Star Wars, this is just me speaking as a mortal man. But I'm led to believe when all hell breaks loose, a lot of people are going to die. A lot of the heathens specifically are going to die by their very own animals that they keep, man. Because the Lord at any minute could just give the order. You know, like on Star Wars when they had Order 66 and the clones turned on the Jedi and killed them. Well, the Lord could give the order to every dog. You know, every Edomite damn near around the world has a dog in their house. If the Lord <laughs> if the Lord put a spirit on those dogs to, to attack its owner, then they'll do it, man. And I'm led to believe that that'll happen, man. Like people are going to get Order 66 by their very own pets. And that's just me speaking of a more, as a mortal man. But yeah, one of the plagues was frogs, man. You had damn frogs everywhere. I mean, look at that. Look at all these frogs, man. All right, next, moving on. Next plague. Exodus 8 and 16, right? And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand, with his rod and smote the dust of the earth and they became lice in man and in beasts all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of egypt man and the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice but they could not so there were lice upon man and upon beast then the magician said unto pharaoh this is the finger of god and Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord has said, man. We you know that's 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 imagine that, man. Imagine dust turning into lice, man, and getting all on people, man. <laughs> imagine that. You know. Once again, lice began attacking people, man. And that's what these heathen dream of, man. That's that that's that dream of alchemy. Let me look it up real quick. You know, alchemy is off, man, but that's the heathen's way. That's the heathen's way of trying to transmutate, man. Alchemy, the medieval forerunner of chemistry based on the supposed transformation of matter. It was concerned particularly with attempts to convert base metals into gold or to find a universal elixir. Occult scientists such as alchemy and astrology, man. So, hey, uh, dust turned to lice, man. <laughs> Who did that? The power of the Lord, man. Look at that plague of lice, man. How that you know, imagine being there. You might look like this girl, man. Even though of course this is inaccurate because she would have looked dark skinned, man. I did a video on that. Watch my watch my Jesus is black video. Of course his real name is Yahweh Shai. I only named it that because the name Jesus is more common. And in that video I correct I corrected the the, the word because it's not his name. His name is Yahweh Shai. All right, and the word cross me the word Christ means Mashiach. The word Christ means anointed. So it's Yahweh Shai the anointed. The, the anointed what? The anointed savior of the nation of Israel. But um let's go to Exodus 8 and 20. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Now what happens if he doesn't? Else, verse 21, else if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, 
and upon thy servants and upon thy people and into thy houses and the houses of the Egyptians shall be of, shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground wherein there they are. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell that no swarm of flies shall be there to the end thou may know us that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. So the Lord, the Lord sent a, a plague of flies, a swarm of flies upon thee. But guess what? It didn't attack the, our people. It didn't attack the Israelites. It just attacked the Egyptians specifically. Meaning what? The Lord gave order to the flies, told them to target these people. But they didn't target other people. Why is that? Because they do the work of the Lord, man. Look at that swarm of flies, man. Check that out. Exodus 9 and 3. Let's get another plague. Exodus 9 and 3. Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very gravest moraine. All right, so the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, right? And camels, and oxen, and sheep, right? Verse 4, Exodus 9 and 4. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is the children of Israel. So out of the children of Israel, none of our things die. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died, but of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. So <laughs> the Lord killed all them cattle. But he didn't kill any of the children of Israel. So someone could say, wait, you know, if these animals, if these animals know the Lord, why, why did the Lord kill them? Well, that's, I'll give you a scripture on that. Well, first let's get this. So you had the animals dropping dead, but why, why did the Lord kill them, man? Because first Samuel two and six, the Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up, man. All right, so the Lord killeth and maketh alive, and he bringeth up down to the grave and bringeth up. Makes me think of this Doctor Strange scene, right? Let's play it real quick. Let's play this Doctor Strange scene real quick. If I get my shit copyrighted, but I don't really give a damn. Dormammu! I come to bargain! Dormammu! 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 Yeah. <laughs> now that was the point, man. You see, you see, man. He he kept dying and getting brought back. That's what that scene makes me think of, man. Um, back to the scripture, First Samuel two and six. The Lord killeth. Oh, let me get out of that. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave. And bring it up. So he can bring them down to the grave and bring them back up, man. Just like in that video where Dr. Strange was dying uh, back and forth, man. The Lord can do that. All right. Exodus 9 and 8. Let's get, let's get some more, man. All right. Uh, and the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you a handful of ashes of the furnace and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. And this shall become small dust in all the land. It shall be, boi uh, be a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. And Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven. And it became a boil breaking forth the blains upon man and upon beast. All right, with blains upon man and upon beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. All right, so, yeah, boils is popping up on man and beast. Makes me think of this. I've always knew about these giraffes, man. Look at these giraffes with all manner of boils on them, man. Look at that. Look at this. You know, that's a terrifying thing to see everybody with that on them, man. Hey, but it happens. The Lord did that. Any other, uh, oh yeah, this is probably one of the most famous ones, you know, Exodus 10 and 4, let's get another, uh, plague. 
else if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring the locusts into thy coasts. And they shall cover the face of the earth that one cannot be able to see the earth. And they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hell, and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fill thy houses, excuse me, and they shall fill thy houses and the houses of all thy servants and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers nor thy fathers, fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh and Pharaoh's servants said unto him, how long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go that they may serve the Lord their God. Knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? So the Lord sent locusts, man. That's probably one of the most famous ones, man. Hey, look up. Look up a damn locust plague, man. Let's see if I can do it for you. I'll do it for you. Let's look up a damn locust plague real quick. I ain't gonna play the whole video. But I'll play this little part. Oh, I didn't have to play it. You see this image? This is a real image. Farmers fight back making animal feed from a locust plague. Look at this, man. Look at all these damn locusts. Kenya is battling a locust plague. Who did that? The Lord did that. On oh, you damn Hamites, man. Look at all these damn locusts, man. Look at that. So I just wanted to play that real quick. You know. That's what's going on, man. So I will bring the locusts into that coast. It's so it's so engraved and uh and how famous the plague is to this day when there's a, a, a huge amount of locusts, guess what they're called? They call it a plague. <laughs> a huge gathering of locusts is known as a plague, man. Look at that, man. Um, so coming back to here, as we went through all the plagues, right? That just makes me think of teeth, of wild beasts, scorpion, serpents, and the sword punch and the wicked to destruction. They're all spirits created for vengeance, man. So insects as well, man. All right, moving on. Salakia. We're going to get an example where honey fed, um, honey fed Samson. Let's get Judges 14, and we'll start at, um, 7. Judges 14 and 7. Um, and he went down and talked with a woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time, he returned to take her. And he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold. There was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took, so there was a swarm of bees in the, in the corpse of a dead lion, right? And he took thereof in his hands and he went on eating and came to his father and mother and he gave them and did, and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion, man. So Samson got a, Samson got honey out of a swarm of bees that had honey within this dead body of a lion. You know, a lot of people might say, oh, man, that's hard to believe. I can't believe that. Well, you know, let's 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 see this. This is this happens today. All right. But the Lord fed Samson, man. But check this out. Look, can bees make a hive in a corpse? According to damn Google, right? The partially mummified body of a man has provided an unusual home for a motley crew of woodland creatures. Scientists discovered wasps, honeybees, and even a squirrel nesting inside the corpse. You know, just an aside, I had a German shepherd, man. He died of old age. And when he died, man, there were flies, but there were also hornets and all type of stinging insects uh, inside his mouth and all type of stuff, man. All right, it was a hot summer. Now check this out. There's an actual bee known for this. It's known as the vulture bee. All right, vulture bees are known as carrion bees. 
they are a small group of three closely related South American stingless bee species, right? So you have an actual animal known as the vulture bee, and they and they nest within carcasses, man. You see that? Vulture bees, the only bees that eat rotting meat. Now check this out. Now check this out. They're vulture bees, right? Now, now going back, you know, going back to where we were at. Hold on, Salakia. A swarm of bees was in, a, was in a carcass of a lion. Well, check this out. Vulture bees. Do vulture bees produce honey? Vulture bees produce a honey-like substance, which is not derived from nectar, but rather from protein-rich secretions of the bee's hypoharyngeal glands. These secretions are likely derived from the bees diet carrying eaten outside the east so these outside the nest so these vulture bees eat dead bodies and they produce honey all right so people that don't believe that well there you go man all right reading on we're gonna get another account of the animals or, or this is another account the animals know the lord man speaking of the birds right now going back to i think the first one i ever used so it said lions Seek their meat from the Most High God, right? Well, let's, like, let's go back. So do birds. Matthew 6 and 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. Nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? It's Matthew 6 and 25. This is the words of the Lord, right? Now check out the next verse. So take no regard of what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Matthew 6 and 26, right? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? All right, so, so birds, birds don't plant, man. Birds don't per, birds don't wake up in the morning and uh, intentionally start farming and they make a, a row of corn. No, man, because they know the Lord is going to feed them, man. So I understand that. Um, let's let's read on. So, yes, birds know about the Most High. You see this bird looking up, right? Let's get another account of the birds working for the Lord. First Kings seventeen and four. First Kings seventeen and four, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have com I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. All right, so he commanded the ravens to feed Elijah. All right, you can read that in the first verse, Elijah the Tishbite. All right, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt. By the brook of Cherith, that is in before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. All right. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. So the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and in the evening, man. Because they were commanded of the Lord. Once again, they know about the Lord, man. That's the title of this video. All right, so look at this raven with a piece of bread, man. This really happened. Right? Um, Genesis 8 and 7. This is Noah. All right, this is Noah after the ark, after the flood, when the flood's kind of receding, right? Genesis 8 and 7. And he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from the, off the earth. Also, he sent forth a dove from him, to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot. And she returned unto him into the ark. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her. And pulled her into him. Pulled her on. Put, excuse me. Pulled her in onto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days. And again he sent forth a dove out of the ark. Let's see what happens. And the dove came in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf, plucketh off, so Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. 
All right, and then you're gonna find one of these times the dove doesn't return. You know, I'm not gonna read the whole account, but so he sent a dove and a raven, man, and a dove returned with an olive leaf to let him know. All right, so the Lord knows about these animals, man. Not well, the Lord knows about them. Of course, the Lord knows about them. Animals know about the Lord, man, and they do the work of the Lord. I've already proven that. All right, this is a raven and a dove. Just want to get an illustration of the picture. All right, and th there's a reason the dove came back and the raven didn't. All right, the dove is the favorite, the favorite bird of the Most High. All right, let's get that in Second Ezra five and twenty six. Actually, let's start at twenty three. Second Ezra five and twenty three. And said, O Lord, that bearest rule of every wood of the earth and of all the trees thereof, thou hast chosen thee only one vine. And of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee one pit. And of all the flowers thereof, one lily. And of all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled thee one river. And of all builded cities, thou hast hallowed Zion unto thyself. So there's a chosen thing out of all things. There's a chosen water the Lord chooses. There's a chosen pit. There's a chosen lily. There's a chosen vine. Right? This is what I wanted. Second Ezra 5 and 26. And of all the fowls that are created, thou hast named thee one dove. And of all the cattle that are made, thou hast provided thee one sheep. So the dove stands out more than any other bird in the eyes of the Lord, just like the sheep out of cattle, man. All right, so the Lord actually has favorites, man. The Lord actually has favorite creations. All right, we're going to find out that the dove is also likened onto the Holy Spirit. All right, you see the dove. And if you look up, if you do your research on a dove, it's a very gentle and peaceful animal, man. Let's prove that the, the, the Holy Spirit is likened onto a dove. Luke 3 and 22. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven which said thou art my beloved son in thee i am well pleased so the holy ghost is in this it looks like a dove man all right it looks something like a dove you know and like i said before that's the lord's favorite animal we got that in second Ezra 5 and 26 all right and animals fear us too let's get that because there's a spirit on them man genesis 9 and 2 and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered. And pretty much all animals fear us, man. That's why they run away. You know, because uh, the dread was put into every beast by the Most High Yahweh Bashim Shai. All right, you can see this bear. We're going to look at this bear, right? The bear ran from the man. Now, you do have accounts where people get attacked by animals and they don't run away. But guess what? That's because there are spirits created for vengeance, man. So the Lord sends them to get, take out their pound of flesh. All right. That's why I said in fear and dread, you shall be on every beast. But fear itself Fear itself is a spirit. Let's get that. All right, so let's bear around. Let's get that. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So fear is a spirit. So the Lord can take off the spirit of fear of the animal and make him attack you, man, and take your life. That's why you have accounts of chickens chasing away humans, man. Let's get this. See if it'll load, man. See, it don't want to load. But you see this chicken chasing this man? It says it doesn't want to load. You see it. Look at that. <laughs> this chicken chasing this damn, this damn Edomite, man. Joe 12 and 7. All right, but ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Right, because a lot of things, you know, Esau will probably never admit it, but a lot of things that you see that are created were actually inspired by looking at a beast, an insect, etc. Man, that's why when you read Revelations, when I did that breakdown of World War One, um, uh, 
when John seen locusts, they actually weren't locusts. They were actually planes. Um, you know, go watch that video I did on World War One. It's somewhere down there. But, you know, like I always told my brother, when I look at a dragonfly, I see a helicopter. I'm sure they were inspired by looking at a dragonfly to create a helicopter. You know, just my personal belief from what I see. So, yeah, man. And beasts teach these. And the fowls of the air, they tell, you know, they tell people things, you know, through observation. All right. You can also look at squirrels. Just, just as a point, you can also look at squirrels. They gather nuts. That's how you know winter's about to come. All right. Revelation 19 and 17, man. Uh, once again, you're going to learn that the animals, they're going to get a reward from the Most High himself. From you, how about you, man, shot. Revelation 19 and 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven. So this angel is saying to the fowls that fly in heaven, all of them. Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. All right? Let's read in. That ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. All right? So check that out, man. The Lord has a supper prepared for all the fowls of the heaven, all the birds that you see. They're going to be feasting on a lot of dead bodies, man. And who said this? An angel. An angel. An angel cried with a loud voice telling the fowls in the midst of heaven. I'm going to get some. I'm going to get that uh, a little later. Actually, I'm almost there. But look at that, man. You got these vultures right here surrounding all these people. All right. But, but just remember that it said an angel cried with a loud voice saying to the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven that he had a supper made for him, right? The supper of the great God. You know, which makes me think of this too. Amos 5 and 18. This is speaking about the same day that we just read in Revelation. Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. What's woe mean? Death and destruction. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. That's right. A lot of people wait on the day of the Lord. They can't wait for the Lord to come back. You hear every Christian on every curb say, can't wait for jesus to come back not knowing that that day of the lord is not for them to what end is it for you for the day of the lord is darkness and not light that's right because if you're not of the elect you're going to be destroyed man. all right the day of the lord is darkness and not light speaking about the same day in revelation all right now check this out this day as if oh i'll just get it as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. So the day of the Lord is going to be darkness, man. People are going to be running away from a lion and a bear might meet him or went into the house. They make it to the house. They, whew, I made it. Lean his hand on the wall and he get bit by a damn snake, man. All right. You see this lion, this gorilla, this damn bear, this damn anaconda, man. Now, remember, I was at Revelation. An angel standing in the sun, he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of the heaven, come and gather yourselves together into the supper of the great God. Let's get another account of an, of a, of an animal seeing an angel, man. Numbers 22 and 21. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab and God's anger was kindled because he went and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now, now he was riding upon his ass and his two servants were with him and the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand and the ass turned. So what? look, the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with a sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn into the way. But the angel, we we'll get it. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards, a wall being on the side on this side, and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw, and when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself onto the wall. 
and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went forth, and went further, and stood in a narrow place, where was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. So this, so this donkey. This donkey actually recognized an angel, man, and, and it, it damn turned to the left, it turned to the right, and then it just sat down, man. Whole time, this damn Balaam, he's whooping this ass, you know, because it's not doing what he wanted to do. <laughs> he's beating his ass, and um, not knowing that it's an angel in front of him, man. And that, and that, and that's a twofold, man. You know, when you see a dog barking, sometimes you see a dog barking, he's barking at nothing. He could very well be seeing an angel, man. You know, they even show you that in movies, man. How, you know, like when a place is haunted or whatever, some madness. When a place is haunted, <laughs> the dog be barking. Why is that? Because animals can actually see certain spirits. This is an account of that, man. This donkey was able to see the angel that Balaam couldn't see. All right. This donkey was, this donkey was trying to get out of there, man. All right, we're almost at the end. We get Acts 20, 28 and 3. We'll get an account where, where where Paul got bit by a damn snake. All right, Acts 28 and 3. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. All right, so a, a damn viper came out and bit his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer whom thou, though he hath escaped to see, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked in a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god, man. You know. <laughs> Which makes me go back to Moses. They, you know, he told Moses, I have made thee a god, man. But, you know, of course, these barbarians are going off. They actually probably tried to worship Paul and all type of madness. But this is an account. Of a viper biting, uh, fasten himself, meaning biting Paul's hand, man. Right? Look at something like this. Of course, they were all so called black, but um, they were people of color. But it would look like this, man. A serpent lashed itself onto his hand. Now, some may say, well, how does that happen? Well, me speaking as a mortal man, I can explain this as well. Now, the Lord can do what he want to do. Maybe he just didn't want the venom to enact. But guess what? There's something in, there's something in the animal kingdom once again. Look at this. Can a snake bite you and not inject venom? Sometimes a venomous snake can bite you without actually injecting venom into you. This is called a dry bite. This can occur in 20 or 25 out of 100 pit viper snake bites. Check this out. What does it say? A viper fastened on his hand. Right? This can occur out of 20 or 25 uh, uh, or of a hundred pit viper snake bites, and it can happen ha in half of all coral snake bites. All right, so it's called a dry bite. So this could happen to Paul or the Lord could do what he wanted to do and just made it to where venom ain't affect him. All right, so that's pretty much it on this topic. Like I said, I might have missed some, but you brothers can fill it in in the comments. It's for other brothers to see. I'm gonna end it with this Psalms chapter 4 148 and i'm ending with this whole chapter it's, it's short praise ye the lord praise ye the lord from the heavens praise him in the heights praise ye him all his angels praise ye him all his hosts praise ye him the sun and moon praise him all ye stars of light praise him ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens let them praise the name of the lord for he commanded and they were created he hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps, fire and hell, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his words, mountains, mountains and all hills and fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalted the horn of his people, 
the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord, man. So praise him, you beasts and you dragons and of the deeps, man. All that, man. So everybody's going to praise the Lord one day, man. You know, especially his saints. We praise the Lord every day, but these people that don't believe, they're going to praise the Lord one day. And with that, I say peace to the twelve. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father who is ignorantly called God. Yahweh Shai is the Savior of the nation of Israel who is ignorantly called Jesus Christ. I want to give a strong shalom to those listening and learning. I want to give a strong shalom to those that are doing the work in truth and sincerity. And I want to give a strong shalom to the elders that have been doing this thing before me, man. All right, we almost out of here. Hopefully this lesson was edifying. We're gone.